Quick service and fast casual restaurants have seen their customer experience shift dramatically over the past year. While much of their sales were already going through drive throughs the pandemic shifted sales even further to contactless purchase options. As we begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel, it's easy to say things will go back to the way they were. But brands are saying that customers really liked the conveniences that were put in place due to the pandemic. I'm joined today by a great panel uh, with Freddy's Frozen Custard uh, that will help us look at the customer experience through the evolving lens of technology. I think uh, introductions are in order. Bill, let's start with you. Ooh, Bill, I believe you are on mute. We're gonna try that one more time. <laughs> Sorry. My name is Bill Buentis and I'm the CFO at Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers. Uh, Freddy's is a casual, fast casual concept that has over 400 locations now. Uh, and we feature burgers, fries, and custard. Thank you so much, Bill. Uh, Sean, you're up. Hi, I'm Sean Thompson. I'm IT director here for Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers. Uh, working with all the tech that is connected both in and above restaurant. Well, I know I'm a big fan of your restaurant, so I'm really looking forward to this uh, conversation. But let's jump in. Bill, can you tell us what uh, Freddy's has done to really evolve the customer experience? Yeah, so, you know, pandemic has been tough for everyone. And we had to figure out how to uh, change because our everybody was changing. And right. so we before pandemic, we had 51% of our uh, sales that came dine in and now we're at 70% drive through. Wow. And so we've had to kind of shift the way we do everything we do because we have to put more of a focus on what's going out the restaurant than what's staying in the restaurant. Awesome. The other thing we, the other thing we focus on is, um, trying to give that guest what they want. And now that you have to service that guest differently from their car, uh, either through the drive through or through a walk up, um, or through a curbside, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out how we get to the point of giving them what they want uh, because that has kind of flipped everything on its head. We're trying to stay agile in what we do because we don't know where we're going to come out on the other end of this. Right. Um, you know, I think being flexible, uh, we've kind of thrown everything at the wall uh, and implemented everything we could to kind of be ready for the future of what would go from here. Um, and I think the biggest thing we did is we decided we were going to use beacons um, in in our tech stack so that when a guest comes to get their food, if they're ordering through the mobile app, uh, they'd be able to use the beacon to alert us that they're there. We drop their food because our, our goal is to make hot, fresh food. Um, and so there's nothing sitting on a shelf. And so that gives the guests the ability to, um, you know, get the same experience they had if they were dining in. Um, except they're getting it their way. And, and we've had to add some signage and things like that to communicate to right. the guests of how that's changed and why we're doing it differently because everybody else does it differently than us. And so everybody's been trained to look for the shelf and, and we need to be a little bit different than that. Well, I can attest, uh, anytime I eat at your restaurants, my food is definitely hot. So you, you're doing something right there, Bill. Sean, I'm, I'm seriously interested in this beacon technology. I think, uh, I think this has revolutionized you know, the, the way we see fast serve restaurants and, and, uh, and whatnot. So can you elaborate a little bit about that technology? Yeah, I'd love to. So built into every one of our wireless access points that we've deployed at all of our restaurants all across the country are Bluetooth low energy beacons. And we went with that technology because it helps give us a more accurate location uh, of our guests. And without getting too tech nerd, probably the best way to explain it would be is if you've ever used a you know a map a app on your phone and you see your little blue dot but it has you in the wrong lane going down you know the opposite direction of the 405 Been there. Uh, it, yeah <laughs> and so sometimes that location data you know can literally put you you know a kilometer or two away from where you actually are and you know it, in terms of operational impact that just gives us you know that kind of inconsistency would mean more potential of mixing up orders and like we already said, we don't want to serve cold fries to anyone. So the, the Bluetooth was key into doing that. So how are you communicating this change with customers, right? Because I'm sure, you know, at first it was probably a little bit of a shock. They weren't really sure what to do. How are you communicating this big change? 
So the, the most obvious one is we started with online marketing and especially through social media channels. You know, our guests love to share pictures of, of their babies, their dogs, you know, families getting together and eating Freddy's, even, you know, when it's delivered to them through our app. Um, so that, that's our primary channel. But, you know, now that we're seeing more and more uh, people coming back to our restaurants, you know, we're, you know, inside every one of our locations, we have three of those uh, beautiful 55 inch Samsung displays. And they're just great uh, bits of uh, marketing materials that we have and we can use. And um, by the way, uh, Jerry with uh, Brothers Media Group previously, he said that he saw a reduction of service with uh, switching over to SOC. And our numbers, that he, the numbers he quoted are basically the same we've seen. So that SOC solution has really helped on our service side, which means that that messaging is available to the guests more often. And we don't have to worry about downed players and things like that behind the scenes. So very critical in getting that message out to the guests. That's fantastic. And next time I uh, bring my dog along with me, I will definitely tag my dog Maple uh, to Freddy's. So you'll see that photo soon. And um, you'll probably see it on our Instagram later. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, up there with my car, right, that I'm buying from exactly. Jerry. Yep. <laughs> so um, it sounds like digital signage has really been a game changer here. Um, I'm really interested to understand Freddie's mobile strategy as well. Bill, what can you tell us about what you're doing around mobile ordering um, and how has that helped both the customer experience as well as your operations? Well, I, I think the biggest thing we're doing is trying to connect with the guests and, and give the guests what they want. You know, our, our strategy at Freddy's is that hospitality is our number one source. You know, hot, hot food is, is right 1A and hospitality is 1B. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, having the guests get what they want when they want is, is the, the objective. And so mobile has been an opportunity for us to allow guests to customize their orders to the way that they want. And what we see is it causes us some problems because the way our systems are set up, we get these long lists of these customized orders that kind of throw our teams off rhythm. Um, and so, you know, it takes some more working to do to figure out what all those things, how can we improve that function so that everybody's working in unison. But, you know, I think all those things are great things because it, you're getting smarter every day and you're figuring out how, you know, the guest wants it because at the end of the day, if we don't have a guest, we don't have anybody to serve. So uh, we know that's our top priority. Right, and I, I think uh, we talked a little bit more about how you were actually testing a spicy burger as a result of some of your mobile ordering. Is that accurate, Bill? It is, and so with mobile ordering, you know, we get more information on our guests, which, you know, scares a lot of people, but what we use that information for in, in everything we do is to try to figure out what the guest wants. And so what we saw in our data is that jalapenos were ordered a lot. And so we decided that we were going to add, we're going to change up our menu a little bit and add a spicy burger to that mix uh, to see how that, how guests would attract to that. And just throwing some additional marking against it to see, you know, if we do something different, what, what's the reaction we get? And so that just started here just recently. So wow. I don't even have the data on how we're doing on it yet, but, um, you know, that's coming off of all the data we're collecting behind the orders and just knowing who those guests are that come in all the time to Freddy's we can better better assess what we should be doing to make them feel like they're coming home and don't have to be pressured into whatever they want to buy. You know, upsell is not a big thing for us. So anything subliminal you can do um, that helps them kind of make the decision they want, which could include an upsell, that's fine by us. But we don't want to have the, the pressure of having to decide what you want. And mobile really gives, I guess, the, the opportunity to um, run with that because I nobody's talking that. to you. I love it. So shifting gears, but going back to you, Bill, what does the future look like in your restaurants? So the future is, is tomorrow is probably a little bit like today. You know, we we have to keep serving the guests every day, keeping our employees safe um, and kind of work through until people start getting shots in their arms and we start to see a reduction in everything of making people feel comfortable in our restaurants. And so if that's through mobile order, if that's through drive through if that's through somebody coming to sit inside because we've social distance tables, um, we're going to keep doing all of those things. But we're going to continue to watch the trends as they change and try to figure out where we can go next. And I don't think we've made that decision of where we go next because I think we're still in the thick of this. And I think we're ready to position ourselves wherever we need to go um, as long as the, the guest wants us to go there. You know, we don't want to lead our guests somewhere that they don't want to be. Uh, we want to walk side by side with them and, and get them what they want. 
I love that. And Sean, I'm sure you're itching for uh, those big groups, those baseball teams coming over after their game to come back to your restaurants, right? Absolutely. Now, I'm sure, you know, the team members who are responsible for cleaning up all that mud and dirt off their cleats after the games, they're not <laughs> as excited. Probably but, not. Uh, but, it, I mean, everyone around here, we're all missing those smiles and, and, and that personal interaction that has has kind of been set aside as, as we've all gone through, you know, this last year and the continued months together. Um, so absolutely. Um, so that, that's a big thing, just the humanity of it all. Uh, but I'm also really looking forward to using the lessons that we've learned to help support our operations um, and do our part in, you know, the technology side of things to keep everything running smoothly, um, both in restaurant and above restaurant. Um, with all this, you know, time that we spent during work at home, we were able to take our business intelligence team and we were able to kind of step our game up and, you know, continue to pump out more data. Um, so going back to Bill's spicy burger data, right now I just have to filter out all of my orders because I'm personally skewing the data. So I've got, I've got to clean that out. Um, and then we'll, you know, we'll continue to support all these growing digital channels that we, you know, everyone's been talking about. Um, even all the way down to those boring infrastructure fundamentals. You know, 18 months ago, if at one of our restaurants, if they lost internet connectivity, no one really cared except, you know, the data nerds. But that connectivity now is, you know, a direct line to earned dollars. Critical. So all of that. And then finally, that disruptive future. Um, you know, we saw how fast we can kick things off, like Andy said, and I want to keep that momentum going. I want to look at you know, the new technologies that, you know, Hamshi and Parrish talked about, some of those, you know, back of house signage that Sarah, Lisa, and Joe were going off. Those are all things that I just, I'm, I'm itchy to keep going and keep moving on. I love it. Well, guys, this has been an excellent conversation. Thank you so much to our panelists and thank you for attending today's session. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We have so much more in store. Education is coming up next, so don't go anywhere. And as always, thank you for attending Samsung VX Live.